Welcome to another episode of It's a Long Road, the Ramble Series podcast. I am your host, Ryan, and with me is my co-host, Dom. How you doing, What's brother? What's up, Ryan? How you doing, buddy? Doing well yourself? Good, good. Good, it's good to another. see you. Uh, you yes. got here by the skin of your teeth. By the skin of my teeth. <laughs> Man, this show is important. We need you here. I, I need my co-host, exactly. my partner. Okay, so I got kind of good news, bad news. The good news is, well, I don't know. I don't know. It's a supersized episode, so I don't know what your time's like. So strap in, Dom. We'll try to be, we'll try to be uh, not too quick because I don't want to be quick, but we got to be concise. Uh-huh. We got to stay focused. Mm-hmm. We got a lot to cover here because we have another episode of Frank Stallone uh, <laughs> this week with Frank Stallone or this week with Frank Stallone. Who is this guy? Whatever the title is of this. this the episode. good news. The good news is this is an extra long episode. The bad <laughs> news is it's about Frank Stallone. <laughs> yeah, I, I think regarding the Ramble film, we're at the end. I looked mm-hmm. to see what we have left, and it's right. the end. Was it like 20, 20 minutes or something? Not, no, not even. Maybe? Not even. Really? That? Oh wow! I, I didn't think it's ten, I think it's ten minutes of film time. Wow. Yeah. So I don't want to spoil. <laughs> if we get through, we get through. I mean, it's ninety percent mm-hmm. action, so very little to kind of really talk talk about. But we'll, I don't know. I, I don't. Know, we'll see. So, we if you want to skip the Frank Sloan, just skip about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> The last the last fifteen seconds will be about Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> this show has gone off the rails. It's no longer about the Rambo films. Uh, well, it is about the Rambo films. It's just look, Rambo four. People get killed. Okay, next film. Let's go. I mean, come on. What are we That's doing? It. Here? Okay. <laughs> Before we get into it, though, we do have an email. This is from uh, Carl. Carl says, "Hey Ryan, uh, loving the Rambo episodes, and check this out, Dom. He says loving the Rambo episodes, and especially." The Frank segments. Ooh. <laughs> so fan mail is coming in. I think the Frank segments have been a hit. I think people are enjoying. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't think anyone has. Uh, put this way. Nobody has written me or commented to stop it. Other than Frank Stallone. <laughs> except for, yeah, I was going to say, except for Frank Stallone. <laughs> you got a cease and desist letter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. It's public property. It's online, brother. <laughs> All right. Uh, he says, I feel like I know more about Frank now than I've ever wanted to know. <laughs> you know too much then. There's not. There's a lot of unnecessary information we know. <laughs> Dom, is there another podcast that covers Frank like us? It, I don't think so. There's millions of podcasts out there. If not hundreds of thousands, tens of hundreds of thousands, if not millions, we have to be <laughs> the top Frank Sloan podcast out there. Positively, 100%. Okay. So he, this is more than he's ever wanted to know. Well, Carl, start changing that want to need to know because we need to know this about Frank, okay? Then he shared that picture that I shared on our socials. He goes, I came across this picture on Sly's Instagram and had to pass it along. And we'll get to that picture. In the picture, you have four people. Notice one of them is not like the others. <laughs> he goes, keep punching Carl. Thanks, Carl. We appreciate it. Perfect email. Uh, we you, appreciate Paul. that. Very nice. Thanks. Keep listening. And yeah, without further ado, let's do this week with Frank Stallone. And now let's check what my brother's doing on the segment I like to call This Week with Frank Stallone. Okay, coming to you from Goals, X-Ray Man, but a different X-Ray lens. But everything's really good. We had a good workout today. We did uh, biceps and we did back which kind of coincide with each other, just trying to get all this back again. Frank, so, uh, I guess it's some sort of restaurant eatery again. Um, <laughs> Another wearing, noisy uh, place. It's kind of noisy. There's, a, I think, air conditioning blowing, drying out his voice a little bit. Of course, he just mentioned he's been at the gym. Good to see that Frank's working out still. Good for him. Mm-hmm. He said he's working on his biceps and his back. He's wearing a shirt called Kronk. It's some sort what, of boxing you, company. What is Kronk? Kronk. It's a boxing company of some sort. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he's uh, working on his backs and his biceps. Good stuff, Frank. Good job. It's not as easy when you take off for a while, so stay consistent. Sometimes we split it up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday can be whatever, ultimate, but... All right, so that's his schedule. But now we know Frank's <laughs> workout schedule. You hear that, Carl? You want to know his workout schedule? Write, Here you go. Write that down, Carl. If you want to look like Frank Stallone, write that down. Yeah, so it's Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesdays are off, then Thursday, Friday, then Saturday's whatever, he says. And then whatever. Sunday he doesn't mention. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I think Sunday is the shooting range day, if I remember. Oh, correctly. definitely, definitely yeah. the shooting range. <clears throat> Everything's good. Like I uh, posted, Sounds of Freedom. It's a great movie. It's really an important movie to go see because you see and hear things that they're not really telling you in the news. All right, so here we go, folks. Sounds of Freedom. You probably heard of this film. It's kind of causing a little bit of controversy, a bit of a stir out there in the uh, in the media. We've Basically, it's been accused of a, being a QAnon film, propaganda. Uh, you got the rights loving it, the lefts hating it. There's some conspiracy theories that the Hollywood's been keeping this film down uh, <laughs> because of the, you know, because basically, basically Frank's of the camp. Let's be honest. Frank is of the camp that Hollywood, the industry that he himself is a part of, it wishes, you know, Frank wishes Hollywood cared about him. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so is Frank part of the SAG? He must be part of SAG. Is he part of the writer's he's, strike? Yeah, I would, I would assume he's part of SAG. I don't know yeah. about the writer's strike, but. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, it's about the child trafficking, about this guy named Tim Billard or Dillard or something like that who takes kids out of these. But this film has now already been criticized for not necessarily being as truthful as it claims to be. Right. The guy that the guy that's in charge of the the program that frees kids has actually left that program. It's really odd. Oh, odd. really? Yes. He recently left the very <laughs> the, the same time this film was released. Some odd stuff. Anyway, so, but of course, Frank is... Uh, Letting us know that Hollywood has kept this film down, and he's telling his uh, fans to watch this film so the Hollywood creepos stop selling children in the sex sex slave market. And it's very disturbing, but I think it's important for people to really be adamant and serious about what's going on with this uh, child trafficking. It's it's very disturbing, and it's got to stop. So, Dom, can you stop selling children on the sex slavery? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to, but I got to make ends meet. You know, I got to. Yeah. I got to feed. I got to feed my family. So, thank you, Frank. We what, what? What a brave! What a brave request from Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Pleading with the masses to to see this film and to stop selling kids into slavery. Okay, <laughs> I'll stop. <laughs> and the United States and other countries have the power to stop it. But we really need to do it because, you know what, God forbid it could happen to you. you. You never know. These people are pretty sophisticated. So God forbid it happened to one of us, Dom. I hope I don't get sold into child I, I'm stuff. worried about it every day. I look over my shoulders when I'm getting in my car and stuff. Look, I'm not trying to diminish that this doesn't happen in the world. But, of course, we want this stuff. But what, what am I going to do? Right. I'm not selling it, and I'm not purchasing this material. So I, I'm doing right. my part, Frank. You're definitely <laughs> doing your part, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm not consuming the media that this produces, and I'm not providing the media that this produces. So, <laughs> like, I'll do as much as you're doing, Frank. Okay. So on right. my on my and platform, that's... I'll echo Frank. Guys, go see Sounds of Freedom because this is a bad thing. There you go. I now yeah. I've done as much as Frank has done regarding. Stay me. away from child trafficking. Stay mm -hmm. away from it. So no, there you go. We've done it just as much as Frank has done. Okay. So it made All a right. difference. And they uh, know how to do it. And $150 billion a year industry is unacceptable. Or well, if it was a $2 a year industry, that behavior is unacceptable. But on a good note, have a great day. Stay safe. Take care of yourself. I like the weather. Segue yeah, yeah. From child trafficking to have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, when you're at Starbucks getting your latte, there's children being sold into sex slavery. But you saw the film Sounds of Freedom, so you've done your part. You're good. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Frank. We appreciate that. Change in the world. It was a sunny day today. A little overcast, kind of shaping up. And All right. So Frank's in his car wearing more shades. He's got a new outfit on, of course. He's got different shades on. And Frank, I think he's watching our channel. He's he's in a soundproof environment here. <laughs> this is the first time, I think. First time. Here I am wearing my Ben Johnson t-shirt to all you folks out there. Ben What I like about Frank is he oh, he's always telling us what he's wearing. Well, Don, what are you wearing today? I'm wearing Elvis shirt. <laughs> from, nice. uh, from Target, about twelve bucks. Yeah, I'm wearing my <laughs> normal black tee top. Like it, I like it. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we should always mention what we're wearing too when we do our videos. We could assume that Frank people just give him T-shirts to wear, right? I mean, I think so. It's, it seems like every shirt he's wearing is either an advertisement for something or something Rocky or Rambo related. 
Right. So this is actor related. He'll explain who Ben. So now he's telling us who Ben Johnson is. Now, when I first heard the name Ben Johnson, I'm Canadian. And back in the 80s, 90s, there was a sprinter, mm-hmm. national sprinter from Canada who broke the world record for the 100 meter. Oh, okay. His name was Ben Johnson. That's not who he's talking about. <laughs> That's not the guy. Okay. No, it's a different Ben Johnson. <laughs> Johnson won the Academy Award for the last picture show. He's a world champion uh, rodeo guy, and he was probably the best rider in movie history. If you look at um, Wagon Master or She Wore Yellow Ribbon, he was one of the great, real serious horsemen. And uh, I love his t shirt. Bahuska, Oklahoma, and he's a, he's a character, and it's a great day, and I hope you all have a great weekend. And I'm wearing my Alpina mirrors, so as my brother called me, X-ray man, this is X-ray man personified. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta say, it's very uncomfortable when he shifts the camera and puts him, puts it right in his face. I feel like Frank's in the room with me. It's very yeah, upsetting. Yeah, he he likes to uh, again tell us the glasses. He you know the shades that he's wearing, the mm-hmm. the t shirts he's wearing, and the next few videos he's going to tell us the color the t shirts are too. Yes, this is a, yes. To be fair, some of the people that follow his Instagram might be blind. He, so he's you know, he's got millions <laughs> of fans, right? You got to talk to all types of people, and it saves us having to describe what Frank looks like. For exactly, our audience. exactly. <laughs> he does it for us. And I love how he says his brother, Sly, of course, called him X-Ray Man at some point in their life. And so he says, this is X-Ray Man personified. Yeah. Oh, my God. I have three brothers, Dom. Not mm-hmm. one of them have ever given me a nickname. Or if they did, I would never bring it up. Exactly. <laughs> my brother called me Doodoo Head. This is Doodoo Head personified. Yeah. Good morning. It's a Monday gold. As you see, I'm in green. I'm wearing a green watch. So I'm basically Mr. Green Jeans. What What does that mean? Green jeans? <laughs> the only thing he's not wearing is green jeans, though. <laughs> he's wearing blue jeans. <laughs> and did you notice Cameraman? What's his name again? Alfredo Alonso? What's his name? What's? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know the cameraman's name? I, no, we, I think it's like... I don't know what it is, Miguel or you know, like, <laughs> Miguel. <laughs> so, did you see the zoom for our audio listeners? When Frank brought up his watch and said he's wearing a green watch, cameraman Miguel zoomed in right away. Now, did they rehearse this? They had to have rehearsed this. I mean, I think these. Where I think we're overlooking the fact that these videos are probably like well thought out. There has to be discussion because watch, mm-hmm. he's standing. And he's talking about a shirt, and then he goes into the watch. Let's just watch that again. I think it's worth noticing again. There's some camera work here by cameraman <laughs> Miguel. Good morning. It's a Monday gold. As you see, I'm in green, and I'm wearing a green watch. So I'm basically Mr. Green Jeans. Anyway, I had a great leg workout. It's very simple. You don't have to kill yourself. Leg extensions, legs, biceps, seated, leg press. Leg biceps? Is that a thing? Not that I ever heard of, but I'm not a bodybuilder or anything like that. So. Well, you, you know what they say about the calf muscle? They're the biceps of the legs. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way when he said that green jean thing, he kind of like waited for laughter too. Oh, we like gave, he, it we well, gave it to him. I mean, we it. gave it to him. We definitely gave it to him. But he, I think he thought that was very clever what he was saying. Well, he knows his audience on Instagram is laughing too. So he gives them a chance to recover. So Right. <laughs> In and out on the seated and calves then you're out it's not it's not rocket science but it- it's not rocket science those uh, leg biceps it's not rocket science uh, sit down and push and uh yeah works so you have a good day and a great beginning of your week peace so monday's leg day i guess eh or this monday was so it was, it was leg day and then All saturday right. you do whatever the hell you want saturday saturday do whatever the hell you want and i think sunday's is uh fire range day it's uh it's a very sacred day for Frank. Okay, the last video of this video portion of this week with Frank Stallone is now he's wearing red. I think he might mention the red shirt. Let's see. Good morning. Just came back from the gym. I am the man in red. Um, it was a good workout. Easy, different. Mix it up a little bit. Not everything in unison. Some- Easy. Mix it up a little bit. Not everything in unison. So what was he doing? One leg press and one arm curl at the same time? <laughs> he just says random things that don't make any sense. 
Why does he always have to tell us he came from the gym? Okay, good job, Frank. <laughs> Frankster. You went to the gym. We already know your schedule. Just you know what, Frank, from now on, just tell us what day of the week it is, and we'll know if he went to the gym or not. I like the way he just has to acknowledge the color he's wearing too. Like I'm the yeah, red man. The, he's the red man. And it's a, yeah, it's very color focused week this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's good to use a little muscle uh, confusion. You know, I'm also wearing red shorts. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. He must have heard the criticism regarding his green jeans. Yeah, where's so he, the green jeans, Frank? The hell. <laughs> he's got the red shorts on. I've seen way too much of Frank's body. Yeah, I, I, don't I don't know. know. I just saw like a calf. I was, that was unsettling as well, honestly. I don't want to catch a like, ball sack in there or anything like that. <laughs> I kind of agree with Carl. There's a little bit, maybe, maybe we get a little bit more frank than we bargained for. We got to tone it down a little bit. So I never wear shorts, but I figured today I would. But uh, there's the old Phillies. So he's wearing a Phillies ball cap. Is that a is that a baseball Phillies cap? There? Yeah, oh. yeah. Mm-hmm. What are they called again? Don't tell me. Don't tell me. The Philadelphia. No, that's uh, the Flyers or the hockey. It's Eagles are that. the football. I forget the Philadelphia baseball team name. It's Phillies. Oh. <laughs> that's a stupid name stupid name exactly philadelphia phillies wow okay so i hope you all have a great day uh i'm just starting my day and it's gonna be a good day any day above the ground's a good day it could be worse okay god bless yeah it could be worse you could be dead okay thanks frank <laughs> <laughs> His vlogs, though, like, I wonder what his thought process is behind them. Like, they're probably like, oh, yeah, be active on social media. And he's just like, all right, I'm at the gym. Oh, right. Good luck. Prayers. Right. <laughs> child trafficking. So this week we learned, go see the Sound of Freedom. It stops child trafficking. He forgot to wear green jeans, so he put on the red shorts. Uh, he works out Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Saturdays, whatever. Sunday, we don't know at all. Really, we're guessing it's the shooting day. And Wednesdays, he takes <laughs> off. Dom, it's not over yet, okay? I'm you're so ready? excited for this. Okay, so last episode, Frank, we, you know, he was kind of quiet because he was dying in that hospital. <laughs> <laughs> he's passing away, but he's alive and well, and he's posted like crazy. So we got this nice picture here. Now I know people that are listening to this on our audio version. I appreciate that. We'll we'll describe each picture, okay? And I'll mm-hmm. give you the, what the write up that Frank gave with each picture as well. So this is a, a picture. It shows like a gun and a holster, and it looked like it might be on a couch or something. So it's just placed on a seat or something. Right, right. A photo, yeah, okay. So Frank says, uh, this is my Ruger Vaquero with custom holster and gun belt by Colt Farrell Leather. So that's cool. Um, that's like a nice gun. Yeah, it's a nice gun. No, And this was fine. This was a fine photo. But I just wanted to comment on one of the comments, though. So the photo itself was fine. But this is from Judy, Judy Harding. And she said, I would love to spend the day with you hearing all of your stories. So interesting at Frank Stallone. A little forward. <laughs> now, that one like that that comment has, is that from the Frankster? Yes. <laughs> look at this photo here okay photo. you gotta prepare me for something like that ryan you can't just drop that bomb on me the easiest way to describe this photo it looks like it is a deleted scene from a party at kitty and studs <laughs> <laughs> now it's frank sleeping and who took the photo of frank sleeping i have no idea it's frank sleeping but it looks like he might be getting pleasure might, from below like yeah and he might be naked yeah definitely <laughs> Oh, he's definitely naked. He's, he's definitely naked in the bed. Uh, the Frank Fro was going on. And this is what, what Frank had to say about this photo. So this is 1971. Hmm. He would have been, oh boy, this is 52 years ago. He's 73. So what do you have a 21, 22 year old Frank here? Wow. He says, uh, 1971 <laughs> wandering musician, kind of drifting, nowhere special to live, crashing on friends' couches or floors. But I was never a lazy beggar or a bum. A bum. He just said he was crashing on people's couches. Yeah. I mean, that's. I think that qualifies to some degree as a bum. Why is it that artists, starving artists, and no offense, Frank, why is it they get a pass for being poor? <laughs> like, right. Go get a job. Go get a job. Exactly. <laughs> you can still practice your guitar, <laughs> but the idea that you're like you're a struggling artist to make ends meet playing guitar. Go get a job. Work on a construction site. Exactly. Go work at a pizza place. I don't, whatever it is, we all had to do it. Like I never played guitar, but I've also, I have never in my life, Frank, no offense. I have never crashed on my friend's couch. <laughs> I've had a God, home I my whole say. life. 
I could like, say that too. I've never crashed on somebody's no, couch. I've never crashed on someone's couch. I've always had somewhere where mail could be delivered to me. Because <laughs> you always worked, Ryan. I've always worked. Frank didn't work. Qualifies as a bum yet again. <laughs> I, I know. But they're using the excuse because he has a passion for playing. This goes for everyone. Right. You know what I mean about these starving artists? Oh, I was a starving yeah. artist. Okay, good for you. Okay. They want to make their money off their art when there's no money to be made. I would play my guitar on street corners or day labor to make money. So he did say day labor to make money again, then get a different job. You have to be able to afford rent. I think I was right. staying the night at my friend Sandy and Larry's place in Mooresville, Pennsylvania. Never had a more peaceful sleep. Okay. So how is it that this sleep that we're, it just so happens that the person who took this photo knew this was Frank's best sleep ever. <laughs> And he remembers this sleep, like he thinks about the sleep. <laughs> He's like, "This was the best sleep I ever had." Dob, do you have a picture of your best sleep? <laughs> uh, yeah, somewhere, somewhere. I had, I, I made my wife take a picture of me because I said this is going to be a good one. Get, get this one, honey. <laughs> get the camera ready. <laughs> how, do, how do you get ready? How do you know? See, he woke up from the sleep. Right? He goes. Uh, he wakes up. Maybe Sandy or Larry took the photo because that's where he was at here. <laughs> and so let's say Larry took the photo of, of a sleeping Frank. And Larry goes, you know what, Frank? I hope you don't mind. I took a photo of you without your permission while you were sleeping. And Frank goes, really? That's awesome because that happened to be the best sleep of my life. <laughs> and 52 years later, I don't know if that's, that record will ever be broken, but if it ever is not broken, I can then de do declare on some sort of social media format, this was the best sleep I've ever had. Some of the comments people made on this photo, Daniel UK said, oh my gosh, at first glance, I thought it was a dead body. <laughs> Tzim Ski said, someone captured you in angelic peaceful bliss. It's got a nice 70s sepia hue to it. You must have many great memories. Ever thought of writing a bio? If Frank gets uh, ever writes a bio, you can Gosh darn guarantee, Dom and I will read that. Oh, hundred percent. I was just thinking of that too, Ryan. We we're on the same wavelength because I was like, <laughs> "Wow, that would be a great thing to cover." That's a whole podcast right there. Just it every be, every week a chapter. <laughs> Frank Sloan's bio podcast. We would <laughs> we would just like audio book read it and comment. <laughs> exactly. All right, next picture here. We've got another gun photo. He's got this real kick lately. His photos have been Western themed. He mm. seems to be on that kick lately because of the tombstone for whatever right, reason. Right. In fact, Frank the Sloan. He actually updated the five his seconds he was in it, right? <laughs> yeah, he was in it for about 30 seconds and he updated his Instagram photo of the character that he played in Tombstone. So he's got yes. a real hankering for that role again. So Frank says here about this gun that he's showing here. He says this was the Smith and Wesson Frontier model in 4440 that John Wesley Harding was carrying when he was shot in the back by John Selman on August 19th, 1895 at the Gem Saloon in El Paso. Harding killed over 25 men and was considered the most dangerous gunslinger ever. He was lightning fast and deadly accurate. He wrote his autobiography a little before he was murdered. Well, I don't think he could have wrote it after he was murdered. <laughs> but He said here that Harding served time in Huntsville prison where he studied law and was practicing law when he was murdered. Hmm. Because Frank is sort of on Harding's side of like he was murdered. I love how the guy who killed 25 people. Right. He met an unjust end when he got <laughs> murdered. <laughs> the unfairness of it all. You got to figure somebody who's killed 25 people might have made a few enemies along the way. <laughs> These are brothers, Definitely. sons, fathers. Right. Live by now, the sword, die by the sword. Mark had this to say. He said he killed 25 men. How much time did he serve? Even if three quarters of those men were criminals themselves, he should have been in jail for life. I'm all for redemption, but not when you have killed that many people. I'm surprised they didn't hang them, though, or anything like that, right? Yeah, I mean, no kidding. Even if one of them was semi-innocent, that's murder. <laughs> Frank responded to Mark. He said, he always said he never killed the man that didn't deserve it. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? You can't just kill people. <laughs> that's his defense in court your honor your honor before you sentence me uh yes yes mr harding i never killed a man i didn't deserve it well by golly release well, this man how, how are you gonna argue with that right <laughs> can you imagine that was your defense in murder well he deserved it your honor okay well all right he's got a right. point he's got a good point there Oh, Frank, you kind of get an idea of how Frank thinks a little bit, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's, one... it's honestly a horrifying thing to think about how his brain works, like just the <laughs> prospect of 
<laughs> what's going on in there. Of course, he's got some more people kiss his butt. Dolores Lampkin says, this is why I follow you. So many interesting things you post, and you're funny. She liked well, the green jean joke, definitely. Yeah, That's well, like... we think he's funny, too, but maybe not the same reasons. <laughs> Okay, so now he's at a gun sh- shop and he's buying a gun here. He says, I love my Sharps. That's the name of the rifle, I think. In 4570 Cal, it weighs about 10 pounds, this gun. Hmm. It's a quiggly down under style. It was originally designed for Buffalo, but Bullwinkle, i.e. a moose, up on the wall will do, LOL. So he's saying this gun was designed for killing Buffalo, but he's happy to kill moose instead with it. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with this man? <laughs> He's the perfect like person that you don't want to like you don't want to have a gun. He seems <laughs> unhinged. Know. He seems unhinged. Somebody did right here. The name of this person is the Metaverse Creator. He said, "Real men go to war. Cowards hurt animals as sport because they never had skills to be a real man." Oof. Oof. Shots fired. I don't know, I don't know if Frank like that one. Ooh, Frank might use his buffalo weapon on on this uh, yeah. guy. Yeah, definitely gonna find that guy. All right, so now we got a great picture here. This is the younger version of Frank here. Frank Flo Flo is doing pretty good here. He's pro- I see this about the 80s here. What, what do you think? Yeah, yeah that, that's got to be 80. I'd say 84-ish maybe. Yeah. I had a guess. He said, this is my second favorite photo. I was living in South Africa at the one and in a good place. I guess the one might be a hotel or something i'm not sure yeah, something he doesn't explain he doesn't explain what the one is and he goes i would love to turn the clock to look like that again <laughs> <laughs> you see where the hair is starting to thin a little oh, bit oh yeah i see it they do that little comb over just to kind of cover you know what right. i mean where it's like no no there's right. nothing missing here like, come on yeah but that's the natural thing it goes back it goes back and then you have the and then all of a sudden you have the hairline of a 17 year old at one point when you yeah 70 is, it's gone forward again a little bit hasn't it or mm-hmm. definitely yeah. People stop posting your younger, like it's, I, you know, and celebrities do this. And I'm sorry, Frank, I hate to call you out, but that's what we do. Uh, I hate to call you a celebrity, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me rephrase that. When people on Instagram or social media post younger things of themselves, I guess they're sad that they weren't young when social media was out. Right. right. So they're like, look, 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 look. This is what mm-hmm. I used to look like. Look, look, look. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. We we're all young once, Frank. And one day we're going to get old. Why the hell was he living in South Africa? Probably hunting. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to kill an elephant or something. All right. This is a big photo here, folks. we got another uh, guest, a guest celebrity. <sighs> so Frank's outside of a gym called Fortune's Boxing Gym. He's got his friend Frank Grillo with him. Frank yes. Grillo, of course. I like the, Frank Grillo, yeah. Yeah. You ever see that TV show Kingdom that, that he was in? No, i never seen it. i got to check that out. That's a really good one. It's very good. Frank's a cool guy. A lot of the comments here, though, were kind of anti-Frank Grillo, though. Really? Yeah, because I guess he's libertarian or uh, or liberal. Uh, okay. So a lot of people calling him a libtard and stuff is what they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> Frank didn't <laughs> take the comments off. <laughs> anyway, so you got Frank Grillo, Sly, and Frank. Don't forget to mention Sly's head. <laughs> <laughs> These two guys are in their seventies. <laughs> it's very puffy. His head in this picture. It, it I don't know what be- was going on. Well, yeah. Frank did right. So good seeing you, Frank. We missed you at the gym, brother. <laughs> Frank must have gone to the gym on a Wednesday. That's probably mm-hmm. what happened. I think. <laughs> now we have another photo of, of Frank with more celebrities, with his brother again. Of course, slides in this photo. We got John Lovitz and, of course, Henry Winkler. Yes, yes. As you remember, Henry, Henry and uh, Sly started a film together called The Lords of Flatbush back uh-huh. in the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. John Lovitz, of course, Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live, yes. Alum, and then Frank. Uh, <laughs> Take you back. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody knows take you back. Everybody knows pushing from Rocky Three, right? Come on. Oh man. I love it. So this is the photo that Carl's talking about. One thing is not like the other. <laughs> Three people have had established celebrity careers, and then there's Frank. So. <laughs> now this is the saving the best for last, folks. Saving yes. the best for last. Now you say, well, Ryan, how can that be? This is just a picture of a motorized horse. Now you remember those <laughs> just- coin coin operated horses back in the day? Yeah, you know, those do. okay, yeah, and we still see them every now and then, but they're not really around anymore. But a, a kid would sit on sit on this little motorized horse and bounce up and down, make a noise or two, or music would play, and mm-hmm. and it'd be like twenty five cents for thirty seconds. Uh, when I was a kid, of course, that was like Disneyland as a kid, right? Yeah, that was the bonus um, of going to the supermarket. Now here we get a little bit more insight to uh, Frank's thought process on, on the world. When I was a little boy, we would go to the grocery store, and there were these children horse rides. Some even had leather saddles. 
Very few of them left. It was an innocent time. So he's talking about back when these horses were around in front of grocery stores. He, this is what he has to say. It was an innocent time when he was a kid before wokeness, cancel culture, disrespect of our flag, our police, and adults. How does he get all that from the horse? <laughs> he just goes on these tangents out of nowhere. He's, he gets triggered very easily, Frank. In 1950, 60, whenever you were a kid, yeah, there was no war. No, no rape, no murder, nothing, nothing no child happened. slavery. Even then, no, this is all new. <laughs> there was no racism. Nothing. Nobody <laughs> died. Women, women were beaten in the home by their husbands. Yeah, well, that's... <laughs> everybody got an equal vote and equal say in the workplace. There's no sexual <laughs> harassment. These are better times, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yes there's a lot of weirdness today look i'm gonna be honest with you there's a lot of weird i call it weird I, I get it things are different and maybe a little bit odd and weird but this stuff whether it's whatever you want to say it's been around forever and mm-hmm. social media the only difference is frank and anyone who maybe even disagrees with me the only difference is is we have more eyes on everything now there have been men dressing up as women in closets all since frank you mm-hmm. probably had a teacher that dressed it up in his wife's dress at home. Right. Okay. It's just the way it was. It just was it wasn't quote unquote in the open or on Instagram, but it happened and people were doing this anyways. There's there were gay clubs and people were also quote unquote being canceled. They're being canceled for being black. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they were pre-canceled. Hey, can I have a job? No, you're black. Right. Yeah, he's just looking through it through that like nostalgic goggles, and you know. I also don't agree you should cancel people because you don't agree with them. I, I don't agree with that, but the things weren't rosy back then. The husbands used to beat the crap out of their kids. I don't agree yes. with that kind of stuff. So I don't think it was necessarily better in all aspects. There were things that sure could have been better or would be nice to see today, but at the same time, I feel more safe about my wife and daughter in today's world than maybe back in the fifties. Or even oh, yeah. 1800s. Like, how far oh, yeah. back do you want to go? Like, when how somebody far was going to kill them and not and get and serve two months after killing them? <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So he goes on to expound on this. Goes the only way you can combat woke PC, etc. You fight back and you tell them to f off. Hmm. F off. <laughs> Who are you saying this to? My neighbor. He's mm-hmm. in a position where, yes, he can do that because he's a millionaire. He doesn't have a boss. He can't get fired from any job. I'm within a system where I have to not play by the rules, but in a way I do. It's my job. It's my livelihood. Right. Certain conversations and things you just you, you have to say at home. You can't say things in the workplace, whether it's teachers, doctors, lawyers, or whatever it might be. Well, he's also saying all this shit, and then he's like, oh, yeah, create more of a conflict. Like, tell him, fuck off, you know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Shouldn't we be doing the other, you know, thing? And I'm not saying there's not a time to do that. He's just saying, no, don't, you know, fight it and say F off and quit your job and live on somebody's couch and make them take a picture of you while you're sleeping. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, there you me. go. That was our uh, episode of this week with Frank Stallone. We'd like to thank everyone who joined us. Uh, Frank, we love you. We want you to be healthy. <laughs> Keep working out. Today is the time of this recording is a Saturday, so it's an anything day for Frank. So he could be doing uh, anything today, Dom. Anything goes. What color do you think he's wearing today? And do you think he has matching watch and shorts? I think he's wearing yellow today. He definitely has yellow shades color. on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Definitely. Well, X ray man. <laughs> X ray man personified. All right. Let's. <laughs> Here we go. We are now going to... Uh, this might be the end of the movie. I think we might be finishing the movie today. Cool. Where we last left... <laughs> where we last left off, a bomb just went rolling. off. <laughs> just with that Stallone rolling down a hill. Is that what I just saw? Yes. <laughs> Rambles rolling down a hill. The effects of this explosion is causing quite kerfuffle <laughs> throughout the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I mention that my favorite Stallone like sound? One of my favorite Stallone sounds is in Rocky Five, when Tommy Gunn picks him up and like suplexes him, and he's like, Ugh! "It's 
one of my favorites. <laughs> All right, so uh, Rambo's rolling down the hill here from the explosion of the air and the energy of the bomb. So schoolboys get Sarah up off the ground, of course, because she's been blowing off on the ground too. She's like, I can't, I can't. But schoolboys like, yeah, you got, you got to move. Come on, you got to move. Mm-hmm. Gonna die here. <laughs> now the Navy personnel have seen the explosion. They're heading towards where the plume, the explosion was. So everyone's being re- redirected as Rambo had hoped to that explosion to get away from uh, Sarah and schoolboy and. So they can get to safety. Wait, what is it? What? What? They hear commotion of soldiers. The uh, schoolboy's looking through his massive sniper scope to see what he can see here. Oh, son of a bitch. Look. What is it? Oh, what is it? Oh, God. So, okay, so what they hear is the <laughs> the surviving members, the missionaries, and the, uh, and the surviving missionaries from the escape, I guess, are now captured by some of the soldiers, and they're just getting kicked and punched and taking the shit out of them, essentially. <laughs> hey, well, I say hi to those who are watching this live right now. We got Tim, we got Louise, we got Donald. Hey, guys, how's it going, guys? Welcome. What's up, guys? Tim, you came in late. You missed our whole Frank Stallone coverage. You're going to have to wait till the release. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let's go back and do it again for Tim. <laughs> do it one more time. Just do everything. Give it a rundown. Oh, man. I can't go through that again. That's just Mr. Green Jeans. Oh, X-Ray man. Okay. So schoolboy seeing a guy holding a 50 cal in a Jeep. Hmm. Hmm. That shouldn't come back into play. God damn. So he's looking around to see basically what he's up against. <laughs> Look. Sorry, this seat kills me. Everyone's just getting kicked. They're on the ground just getting assaulted by the Burby soldiers. Somebody should just put Robert De Niro in there from like Goodfellas stomping out somebody. <laughs> or even better at the Irish. What was the Irishman or Oh uh, the Irishman, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he's kicking that guy with old De Niro with the uh, CGI I can talk face. about that. I could talk about that scene for hours. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Oh, they just get kicked and pummeled with the weapons. Why are they not turning themselves over to a ball? You're getting kicked mm-hmm. in the ribs and the side. Right. Just, <laughs> just curl leaving up. themselves open for every wound, every wound <laughs> yeah. possible. If I was being kicked and assaulted, you put yourself in a ball. You put Something your hands over tried. your head, put your knees up to your chest, but they're just like staying kind of open. <laughs> Let me lie on my side for you so you can really get a good shot at my ribs and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so Michael or fiance is there. He's one of the prisoners, and the leader, the pedophile leader, is there as well. And he's telling them, I guess, to tie him up now or something. That's Lewis, of course. <laughs> Lewis just throwing names at them and antagonizing them. Oof. So the guy, the pedophile, is uh, going through and he's just beating them all with a stick, beating them all down to the ground. And it, I, I should probably mute this anyway. It's a bad language here uh, from Lewis. <laughs> it goes, Come and have a go at me. You, yeah, yeah, I won't even say it. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I can't even repeat it. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's gonna sound bite me and make me hit. Uh, forget it they're gonna cancel yeah. you i'm gonna be on next week's episode with uh frank stallone doing it so lewis just keeps antagonizing him. So, come on do something to me you remember his leg got blow, blown to pieces from that yes, line yes okay so the uh pedophile leader is banging on his broken leg they're just beating the soldiers he's yelling at them and rightfully so they're terrified of the situation because they don't know what's going to happen they're all being pulled up and they must assume at this point the rd going to be killed I mean, how do you want to play this out? Because the carnage <laughs> and chaos is about to happen. There's really nothing we can... I mean, we'll play it through, but the volume will be down for the sake of... You can't... There's there's very yeah, little There's very little dialogue. That. So they're being pulled up, hands behind their heads, and now there's rifles and guns being pointed at them. The leader is calling out for their execution. Michael's praying, of course. And Sarah's asking, well, what do we do in this situation? And uh, the schoolboy's like, there's nothing we can do. He says that, but he does have a weapon. I mean, I would do something. Especially take a couple of shots, you know, try to, even if you just rattle them, 
you, you know? exactly because if you got that sniper because he has a shot on the leader right now that would be my right. first hit like right if i understand correctly like army guys they won't wear rank in the field okay because they don't want to be known as a leader right and right. so that in this situ- yeah so in this situation you got this guy with the medals on his chest and everything he's, he's <laughs> kind of tell he's the top dog so if i was schoolboy he'd be the one i would shoot right knock him out then maybe snipe another one or two guys out as a soldier you leave no man behind you fire that's my philosophy like you're like fine if i die i die but there's no way i'm just gonna let my soldiers die as well without me doing something because yeah you're right the chaos would do something you take yeah. leader, everyone's gonna look around like who 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 fired that right and, and then get, maybe they could get up and grab somebody yeah. or something right. yeah they've all accepted you know we see the different faces of the missionaries and soldiers pretty much accepting their fate <laughs> and then you see the face uh, another face <laughs> <laughs> we as a viewer were left to you know we're left to believe how how will these individuals get out of this well the classic scene of Rambo coming up behind the uh, 50 cal guy of the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, God. oh my God. <laughs> this movie is essentially a Friday the 13th movie. I mean, he's, he's Jason in this film. What he does in this scene, it rivals a Friday the 13th movie. He just, yes, for our listeners, uh, please watch <laughs> us on YouTube. If it doesn't get like, banned from youtube for the violence he chops off the guy's head with one swing of his machete his remember the knife that he made that knife that yes. he made? there you go there it is there's that kill he sharpened it for this kill <laughs> let's just play this out a little bit here <laughs> the perfect screen grab watch the episode just for the screen grab that is on the screen right now <laughs> uh, i'm gonna use this gun okay here we go let's watch a little bit of the action here so he takes off the guy's head grabs the 50 cal God, he exploded. The uh, 50 cal gun operator, he's got his head chopped off. The driver in the front <laughs> got turned into hamburger meat. At least he died peacefully, that guy, because you don't know what hit him. He was there one second, and then he just, that's it. He's gone. Which I don't think that was the best way to take care of that guy, really, because he's already <laughs> chopped off the one guy's head. He could have easily overpowered the other guy and did a, si- a more silent kill. But now, mm-hmm. of course, everyone's been alerted to the gunfire. I love the uh, sequence there of the meat, the guts oh, on the God. shield of the fifty cal just mm-hmm. sliming down. <laughs> God, it's like and the meat we... the meat shop where he works in in Rocky Two. Like it's the same meat. Uh, Adrian, cook the meat. Uh. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. The fifty cal taking out everyone. Endless supply of ammo. People's body parts are falling. Calves being blown <laughs> apart. Adamans flying around. Chaos. People's legs being blown apart. I just, <laughs> I just don't know. What do you want me to say? It's it's a cacophony fight now. Like It's, it's all online if you want to watch it. it this just, is when I start thinking maybe the violence in this movie is a little excessive. And we said this at the beginning. The Burmese soldiers have had their way. They've had their way with the civilians, the villagers, the dancing woman. And this is a way now for us to, as an audience to go, yeah, <laughs> we have such glee in the carnage because everyone that's getting torn to shreds is quote unquote a bad guy, right? Right. What I love is Rambo's ability to aim that 50 cal. He doesn't hit uh, anybody yeah. that is a friendly. It with those big, those big forearms he's holding it with. So Lewis is getting in the fight. Everyone's got a weapon. They're all fighting. Like everyone from the mission and the soldiers, is, I think they all survive this, I think, or maybe one guy died. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Now soldiers are firing on Rambo's position with the 50 cal. And I love how he's using the uh, the shield that's in the front, the meat shield in the front there to protect yes, himself. Yes, the meat shield. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Asian guy dies. The Asian shoulder dies. Uh, oh, there you go. So we do have a victim. We got. Well, yeah, poor guy. Rest in peace. What was his name again? Tujin or something? Or <laughs> <laughs> I, I forget. <laughs> so Michael, of course, is just scouring and hiding. Oh, oh one of the missionaries just got shot in the back. Woof. Oh, that's bad. And Michael witnessed that. So Michael witnessed one of his missionary friends get shot in the back by the pedophile leader, right? Yes. Rambles reloading the 50 cal, which I which I appreciate they're showing a reload right. sequence. But here comes Michael. He takes down a soldier. Now we get to see him like become almost animalistic, right? He grabs a rock. It's primal. It's not. Whoa. Yeah. Let it out, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's probably like the most, uh, what do you call it? The, one of the most brutal ways to kill someone is to smash the uh, head yeah. up with a rock. What, what a rock, yeah. 
He did it. He said he crossed over. Oof. Just now saw we got some, some kind of, the, of torso uh, or something get exploded. The villagers there. are coming. The Karen Rebels are coming. So we got more people coming. The Karen Rebels are here. This is great. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's man. Just hear, I want to hear more of this. Uh, watch more of this. So what's your overall thoughts, though, on, on this action sequence? It's great. I love it. At times, it feels like a little much. Even though I like it, it's like, <laughs> it feels like a little much. Like, I, <laughs> Is it necessary to be this violent? Probably not. And I'm somebody who loves, like, I love horror movies and stuff. But I feel like in those movies, there's like a place for it because it's like, it's so fake. But especially that in the beginning of this movie, he grounds it in that reality with showing like the real horror in Burma. And then he's just going like way overboard here. <laughs> I have a theory because we talked about how with the third Rambo was a little cartoonish, a little silly. It was the comedy version of Rambo. Yeah. Even though the action sequences were fun, but they were on a scale of almost like an Indiana Jones violent scale. Right, they, they, right. It wasn't that violent. Indiana Jones is actually kind of a violent franchise in many ways. Mm-hmm. I think Sly was like, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back gritty and brutal. Like he, he, his intention right. was always to be, this is a hard R. You're not going to laugh. You figure like now before this, what is it? When Rambo 3 came out? 80... 88. So to bring it into like the new age, you know, because at at that point, people were looking at 80s action movies like they were, oh, they're kind of cheesy and stuff like that. To bring it into the the newer age at this time, he's like, all right, I'm going to be real. I'm going to show everything. You know what's crazy is uh, this came out in 2008. So this was 20 years after part three. Now this is already 15 years old. It's nuts. It's really nuts. That's what I feel old, Ryan. I feel old when like movies are old. You know, I remember seeing it theaters. I'm like, wow. I still remember seeing this one. I totally agree with you, Tim. Uh, In our chat, he said, uh, realistic that some of the missionaries and the missionaries did indeed die in a war. Not everyone will survive it. So that's very true. It's more realistic that way that we have, quote unquote, the good characters or the other side of people are dying too. Yeah. Now, we have that Navy boat on the river, and they have a 50 cal as well. So they're laying the waste from the water level. So they're coming down with their 50 cal. That tracker guy at the beginning, he's there to uh, try to take care of this boat. But Ramble sees it. So they have a flamethrower, which I think is a fun little sequence. There's nothing better mm-hmm. than a good old flamethrower sequence. <laughs> love it. Love the stuntmen covering themselves in flames and oily rags. Yeah. I always love that. So Rambo sees the boat, sees the flames. He's like, well, I got to refocus my uh, energy over there. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's just like, such a good shot of the meat shield. <laughs> yeah, I love the meat shield. There it is. So that's kind of a fun little sequence. We have a 50 cal and 50 cal action. You know, the, <laughs> the guy from the boat shooting up at Rambo and he, Rambo gets kind of hit. The bolts are, of course, very strong and powerful. The meat shield can only take so much. It turns his gun around. Yes. So Rambo's got to refocus his efforts here. Good Stallone scream now. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Sarah, this whole fight is just covering her ears and it's too much. Ooh, stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> Sorry. So Rambo sees another convoy of soldiers. Burmese soldiers are coming in. And like Rambo's like, uh, that's too many people. Stop coming. <laughs> <laughs> How many people I got to kill? So he refocuses the effort again. He went from the people. The first he went to the Burmese soldiers that were hurting the missionaries. And he went to the boat people. Now he's going to the uh, new truck of people let's watch this sequence this is always a fun one here shooting fish in a barrel literally <laughs> oh my god. god could you imagine like sarah what's going through her mind could you look at this man ever again after you see him kill all these people <laughs> well spoiler alert for the uh final part of the film i think it's why sarah probably cho- chooses michael <laughs> at the end <laughs> I've had enough of this man and his his head without a neck. I've had enough of him. <laughs> I do like how before Rambo kills the guys in the truck, he has to mow down the tree. He had like does some. <laughs> he does like. <laughs> do you see that? <laughs> the tree of the way. Get out the tree of the way. I can just run it over. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's. So now Rambo's focuses everything back on oh. the boat. <laughs> 
<laughs> what is this Dawn of the Dead? Like <laughs> crazy. Schoolboy takes out someone's head. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Now we got the the rocket launcher takes out the bow. I mean, this is amazing. Okay, that's it though. Oof. See, as quick as it started, Dom, it's over. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. No more the violence. Are, okay, I know we're you know nearing the end of the film here, but it's a great action sequence. We just had the bomb, so there's a lot going on. We had the bomb, then we had mm-hmm. the fifty cal. Right. What's your thoughts on? Well, let's watch the kill here. So Rambo sees pedophile leader get away or run away. Must have to go to the bathroom or something. <laughs> oh wait, yeah. no, there's a knife in the stomach. Oh. So Rambo disembowels pedophile guy. Guts him, <laughs> spills his guts, and then kicks him down the hill. The body kind of rolls weirdly because it's like cut in half. <laughs> uh-huh. That's a very satisfying kill. Don't be wrong. The guy's a pedophile. Like, let's mm-hmm. nobody cry for that guy. But it doesn't seem like sort of anticlimactic, too. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, there's something. I don't know if it's because, especially in the previous Rambos, when he's shooting arrows at people, blowing them up. Yeah, something about it. There's something about I- it. I don't know what it is because now it's over. We're done. Mm-hmm. That's it, folks. The movie's over. You figure they would have maybe gave the pedophile like one last chance where you thought he was going to get the best of Rambo, but it's not like that because he just kind of sneaks up on him. Yeah. Was like just, maybe he was I, about he was, to aim a gun or something like that. And you see, pedophile man, he runs up the hill. Like literally, it's a three second run and then he's just gutted by Rambo. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I have to find a tree big enough for my head, though. I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> so what I love here is we have this sequence here of Ramble overlooking the carnage. I don't know how to describe it. He's holding his big <laughs> knife that he made. He's breathing heavy. He's covered in blood and guts. This is him coming to after he just like saw red. He was probably in a trance killing all those people. And now he's just like, what have I done? <laughs> There's a part of him that's a little bit, this is who he is. This is. Oh, he loves this shit. Yeah, he loves this. <laughs> He's a killing machine, just like Troutman. <laughs> but I think this is the last time I'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll go home now. <laughs> it's time to go home. So now Sarah's looking for Michael. Michael? Michael, where are you? <laughs> Michael. Michael. Michael's still coming to the realization that he beat somebody to death with a rock. And Rambo's watching. Sarah looked for Michael. He's like, but what about me? I killed all these people for you. I thought you were going to show me your boobs at least. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could draw you like I did in part five of Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> don't show this to your mother. She don't understand French. No good. <laughs> yeah, she looks French. <laughs> What's he <laughs> <laughs> like a spider or something on my shoulder? <laughs> like an angel on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> so for sorry for our, for our audio listeners, Rabble's using his right hand to clench his left shoulder. He's probably like, it's a lot of work to move that 50 cal. Yeah, I guess that he's feeling the pains now. Now after the high of killing a hundred people wore off. Got calcium buildup. <laughs> look how he, he i just love how rambo's overlooking the clean up and the carnage and he's just like that was me he's like i'm not staying here to clean it up he's like i'm leaving i did my job <laughs> it's just such a funny corny his face here oh my gosh does that even look like slime <laughs> yeah it doesn't he looks like a different human being like he looks like he evolved like a pokemon or something like into something else it's not the same person his nose looks like, what happened here That's so weird okay 
How many times are you going to say Michael? Michael! Do you think they learned their lesson? Like, we're never trying to do this again? <laughs> Ramble sees Michael and Sarah hugging. And he's like, I guess she's better with him. I guess. <laughs> I'd probably kill her or something. <laughs> well, Michael did kill a man with a rock. I gotta say, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I should do that in the next film. <laughs> See that little smile that he kind of gives there? A little bit of a smile? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was he waiting for her to be reunited with Michael? He's like, my job is done. <laughs> what? I don't know what's going through his mind right now. So Michael's like, I gotta help them, okay? And he's like, look at Michael going right back to business, helping the injured. Yeah, yeah. Are any of the Burmese soldiers being tended to? <laughs> well, I doubt it. <laughs> it's, it's one person's like, I've just lost my leg, but I'm still alive if you want to help me. Somebody? <laughs> they just stop beating him to death with a rock. Okay, look how far away Rambo is here. Look, he's way up there. <laughs> I feel like it's got a deeper meaning. It's like he's, you know, he's one. He's he's so separate from them. You know, he's like an animal just watching. That's he doesn't exactly belong what with it them. Is. That's right. He mm-hmm. doesn't belong there. He's, he's totally exposed and because the last time that he saw Sarah was when he stripped her of her clothes. Remember when he yes. took a piece of clothing from her, that was the last time they were together. And now mm-hmm. he's not going to talk to her ever again. Is that what we're led to believe? He's in full animal form. It's almost yeah. like, you don't want to see me right now. So I'm covered in, I'm covered in Burmese go- goop and right. I've just disemboweled the guy and my shoulder. kind of hurts. <laughs> he did his job, but now he's just, that's it. He's gone. But she's looking up at the hill. She's looking up at him. Music cue. He's looking down at her. She's thinking, you know what? I probably should spend my life with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This guy's a psychopath. <laughs> she's looking around at all the carnage. And Rab was like, yeah, I, I did that. <laughs> that was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> This is pretty bad. So Michael sees Rambo way up there and he's like, he gives a wave of, I'm Thanks. sorry for all the things I said about you. And and it looks like Sarah chose me anyways. And <laughs> you could go now. Yeah. Rambo's still looking over like, this is forever. This is like the longest <laughs> outro. How many different shots are they going to spin around Stallone's enormous head? That's how long it takes to get around his head completely. It takes one hour to uh, one hour for, for the film to rotate around Rambo's head. <laughs> this must have been the extra footage from the original cut. How many sequences do we have to see here between Sarah, Michael, oh Rambo? <laughs> <laughs> Live long and prosper. <laughs> it's like I'm from another planet or something. Well, uh, until next summer, I guess, when you guys come back. <laughs> Look how big that hand is. <laughs> I was just going to say that. His fucking hand. That, is that like a camera effect? This hand is almost as big as his head. <laughs> HGH stands for human growth <laughs> hand. Or <laughs> Really, when you think about it, his neck is enormous, too. Like the, the couple of glimpses you get at his neck. Look at this thing. So he waves goodbye to Sarah. Sarah waves goodbye to her. and Rambo's got to go back to thinking about Co. And she cries again because she's torn, you know. She goes, I kind of love that man. There's something <laughs> about him, something animalistic and powerful draw. <laughs> something about those giant hands. But why doesn't Rambo come down to like at least help or anything? Like, it's just weird. He's like, oh. It does go on forever, though. I know. So he walks away yeah. from the carnage and chaos, and now time has passed. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> The hair is the best. The whole outfit, the jeans, like, you know, they're trying to put him in the first blood clothes again. And it's just like, oof. All right. Uh, I was just talking to Matt. He's in our chat right here. And uh, I had Matt on in season three. And he oh. wanted to be part of the flood intro to the uh, director's cut of Last Blood. So so he'll guest host with that. So that's awesome. Cool, okay, cool. Looking forward to it. Yeah, good guy, Matt. Okay, back to Ramble's hair. This is ridiculous because even if Ramble, the character, is a little bit younger. So Sly, we know, is about 61 in this film. Right. So the actor is 61. The character Ramble is at least 58, if not 55 to 61, right. too. Like the character is about, why doesn't he have any gray hair? <laughs> and it's just something about, you know, not that he looks good. When he's got the bandana on, but when the bandana's there and his hair's wet, it just, you know, it looks better. 
it looks when it's better. all dry like this and he's got nothing, you know, he's got nothing hiding his forehead. Because right there, he looks like his head looks enormous there. <laughs> he looks like Frankenstein's monster. Like he, it's big. I know what Sly is doing. And I, and I respect the sense, like I get it. And it's actually not that bad of an ending. I kind of wish it was more. I'll say what I wish it kind of ended with here. But it's not bad. He's gone home. He's gone full circle. He's he finally ignored- went home. He finally went home. He found the strength to see his country again, to be home, literally home mm-hmm. again. And he's wearing the same, almost the same outfit that he wore when right. <laughs> Sheriff Teasel picked him up. But seriously, look, he's got the bag over his shoulder, uh-huh. he's got the green jacket on, and he's got the same hairstyle and cut almost that he had in, the, in mm-hmm. 1982. He's come full circle, the character and everything. Okay, so he's gone home. R. Rambo is the name on the, on the box because that's his father's name, his father's right. farm. It's R. Rambo. He's like, oh, yeah, that's my dad. <laughs> now, I haven't been home in 40 years. <laughs> yeah. So how long is it? Okay. You know, we talk about it in my Rocky podcast. We talk about the Rocky timeline. So we don't really talk about it in the Rambo franchise. Maybe we should have. But what is the timeline then? Right. Now, between films, between 82 and 2008 is 26 years. Did I get the math right off the top of my head? Okay. Right. I think so, so, yeah. he, so he's about 30 or 34. Let's say he was 30. He was 30 and 76. So he's 36 in Rambo, or sorry, First Blood. So he's about 52 here, the character. So let's just say he's mm-hmm. 52. Okay. Right. Maybe 52 to 55. So there you go. He's younger. We get it. The character's younger than what Sly is. Oh, we understand that. Fine. But again, no gray hair. So we got to figure <laughs> either the character has no gray hair, which is crazy, or. Rambo, the character, bought. You know, oh, I like to dye my hair, so I like to. I like to <laughs> right, right. You know, but he doesn't seem like the dye your hair type. <laughs> right. Now, is his dad alive? When we see the shot of him going down the driveway here, and I've got the music turned down just because they'll get that copyright claim when I try. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The mu- music, uh-huh. you know, it's, it's music. Do you know what? It's the actual music that gives you the biggest hits on YouTube. The music. So right, of course, of course, they take everything down immediately. Yeah, but for some reason, the pictures don't seem to matter. So Rambo smiles; he's happy to be at home. This is the first time we've actually seen him smile, really, almost mm-hmm. in some way since the yeah. first Rambo film when he smiled about seeing the kids playing, in, you know, in the, right. in the yard there. Yeah, yes, he does have gray hair and last blood. You're absolutely right, man. We'll talk. There's a that. moment. There's a moment there that it almost looks like a shot from First Blood, right there. Like right. There's, there's this moment. We're led to believe he's in Arizona. That's where he's from. He's on the farm. Is this the same farm from part five? Is that what we were led to believe as well? I think I think so, right? Like I it's mean, his farm? Yeah. So yeah. it's his R Rambo. And there's this is what I'm getting at whether his dad's alive or not, because there's still animals and stuff on the farm. Like it looks like it's been upkept. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing his dad maybe is alive. I don't remember now with the fifth one if there's ever any discussion of that. It's possible his dad had him at 25. Let's say his dad's 80. Right, and then his dad passes possible. away between the fourth and fifth film. But if it's not his dad on the farm, there could be just people on the farm. But it's in it's in Rambo's name or John's name. And- <laughs> he go and kill all those people that are in his dad's house right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, there we go. That is the John Rambo cut of the Rambo film. The credits are twenty minutes long, so <laughs> that makes sense. How do you feel about it after watching it again? It's such a weirdly odd film. I don't know how to describe. Meaning, if feel even with the John Rambo cut that we did, and I know we've done what's now eight or nine episodes covering this film, and mm-hmm. thanks to uh, our Frank Sloan segments, we dragged it up because <laughs> I, without the Frank Sloan segments, we could have easily done this like four episodes ago. It's a great action sequence at the end, but it feels oddly. The action is amazing. It's great, and the the final kill itself is kind of cool. But I don't know why it feels rushed. It still feels like the shortest film of the franchise. Like First Blood doesn't feel rushed. Even Ramble 3 was a little long. Right. Like, I don't know what's wrong with this film where it felt rushed. And then Last yeah. Blood doesn't feel rushed. There's something rushed about this fourth film. I, I can't put my finger on it. Right. I wonder if it was... I mean, now we watch the, you know, the, other, the extended cut, but because it's so violent, that last half, that maybe he had to cut it so much down, and it, maybe that's why it feels faster, too. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe because he didn't have any reconciliation talk with the people, any farewell, which is odd. I think there was some missing character development. I think that's what the problem was. I th- this is how the ending should have ended. And there's nothing wrong with fan service. And, we're, and uh, I have fan service, especially regarding the, the fifth film. The Sly should have written him saying goodbye to Sarah, saying, 
I see what I have to do now. I don't belong here anymore. I can't do this no more. Something. This, right, this right. isn't who I am or something to that effect, right? But the fact there was no dialogue, no send-off with him or Lewis or the soldiers or Lewis saying, you're one hell of a boatman or something. There's something. Like, there was just right. no payoff. And right. I think There's that's no one closure of the, there. He just kind of no walks closure. away. No closure. He just looks over them like some sort of guardian angel and walks away. And I don't know <laughs> if that necessarily worked. I don't know if the silent three-minute drawn-out orchestra music with him looking over the carnage because then he doesn't say anything again when he walks up. There's a lot of no talking for the last 10 minutes of the film. Right, right. There's nothing said. No human action. Sh- shot to the face and her staring at him and Michael staring at both of them. Yeah, the most talking was Michael and Sarah saying, let's go clean up the mess. we got work to do. This could have easily been the last Rambo film. And then the last thing they should have done is him actually walking into the house and having his dad there. Can you imagine right. an 80 or 85 year old man gets a John? And that would have like, been amazing. Like, like a little hug or something. Yes. Mm-hmm. Imagine seeing Rambo hug somebody. The last person that we saw him hug was Colonel Troutman of First Blood. Right, right, right. Imagine if we had like a full circle truly of him hugging his father, not his father figure, Troutman, but his dad saying, the Welcome home, son. Right. Welcome He's got home. That happy ending for Rambo. Yeah. Do you think anyone would have been mad at that? Do you think no. anyone would have said, no, I think it would have been amazing. I think it would have worked. Yeah. I, but why wouldn't they? What's the reason? This whole mystery of him walking down the driveway, we don't see. You got to make do up you, the story in your mind. Who's really there? Do you think some of that was because maybe Sly planned on doing more? Well, they could point? have easily just done it like his father – was near death. Like you could tell he was mm-hmm. old. So when part five right, rolls around, right. his father right, at that point, right. his father would have been 90, 92. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause what was it? 2008 to two. Yeah. 11 years later. So he would have been, yeah, 90. Yeah. So yeah, his dad passed away. He was 85. Right. He was an yeah. old man. And just, just, I don't know. Like, it just would have been cool to see his dad. Yeah. I definitely see what you're saying. I think my biggest problems with this movie, if I have to nitpick it, is just the CGI stuff, like the CGI yeah. shots and stuff. That always, even in the theater, I remember, it just took me out of it a little bit. Sure. Especially that that last when he kills the pedophile guy. And it's just, you can see when he rolls down the hill, it's CGI. And- A fun film. Mm. I want to thank everyone who joined us live while we did this live. I want to thank, if you want to be a part of the live discussion, so we're talking to Matt, Tim, Donald, uh, Louise. If you want to be part of that group, folks, just join our socials. It's on it's the show notes, so Twitter, uh, the Facebook group, right. and Discord. If you join one of those socials, I always announce when we're going to go live, and it works mm-hmm. for your time zone. We'd love to have you be part of the chat. We'd like, we like to integrate people's uh, comments in the uh, podcast discussion because we're, we're like a community here. If not, send us an email. We love your emails. Thank you, Carl, for this week's email. Send us an email. Of course, the next episode is going to be Last Blood. It's my goal to get a copy of the director's cut of Last Blood, which has the uh, flood scene at the beginning. And Matt, I believe, be part of that. I believe for anybody watching too, it's available like digital. In at least in the U.S., it never had a a physical release. It was just digital. It originally was like an Amazon Prime exclusive, and then they started selling it. And like I got it a while ago, just a digital copy. But. Okay, I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, so we want to thank everyone to join us. Tim just says here regarding the ending. He says, I think Sly leaves the door open on the ending because with Rambo movies, there's always there always could be another film. Yeah, I agree. And I don't think it would have closed the film, per se, having him show his father. But I guess, I, I don't know. I think it still would have been that f- he, he came home. And having his dad to say, welcome home, son. Welcome home. You right. know? Even if you just heard the voice. Even yeah. if you heard like a voice, he opened the door and you heard the voice. You could have the guy in his rocking chair, the same rocking chair we see in part five. That's right. the one we see his old man. And it, so we see Rambo sitting in that same rocking chair, part five. So there you go. It would have been a nice little call back there to the fourth. Or he but, opens the door and it's Frank Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> it's his brother. <laughs> hey, yo, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of my red outfit? Uh? <laughs> Rambo shoots him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, thank you again, everyone. Again, join us next week where we'll do Last Blood, last season of the Ramble podcast, and, of yes. course, the Frank Stallone journey will <laughs> continue. I, what's going to happen when we end uh, season five? What are we doing with Frank? I do I mean, there might be a Frank Stallone spinoff or something like that. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching, everyone. With that, this episode is over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. It wasn't my podcast. You asked me to co-host. I didn't ask you. Thank you.